This is gonna sound really weird, but just give me a chance, okay? Because I built a Shrek-inspired sort of swampy cottage for my legacy challenge, and I want to show you how I did it. So I've been playing the Not So Berry Challenge over on my Twitch channel, which is a 10 generation color-themed legacy challenge. And I'm currently on the green generation, so I needed to make a house that was all green everywhere. Which in comparison to most of the other Not So Berry houses that I've built is actually not that chaotic. Green is just a little bit more palatable than like an entire house where everything is bright orange or something. So let's just dive right into the speed build and I'll show you what I made. So obviously our main two inspirations are Shrek and green, but the real concept behind this was like Mossy Cottage in Henford on Bagley because my sim's name is Moss. And in this challenge, each generation has assigned traits and tasks and the green gen is squeamish, a geek and cheerful. And they're supposed to be a hacker in the tech guru career. They've got the computer whiz aspiration and they're meant to be interested in things like video games and programming. But when I wrote this challenge, I was kind of trying to write like interesting sims and pair skills together that you wouldn't maybe normally focus on at the same time. So the other half of this particular generation is that you're supposed to accept every invitation to parties or outings with other sims, which in hindsight is an extremely annoying rule. But I wrote this in like 2017. I was a child. I was was annoying and the game kind of gave you less invites to go and do stuff back then but the idea here is that when you get a call from somebody that's like hey I heard there's a celebrity over at the bar in Del Sol Valley you have to go with them or if you get invited on a date you have to say yes and go to the cafe with them stuff like that so a couple of the other rules for this part of the challenge are that you have to master the mixology skill because I don't really ever do that one so I put it in the challenge as kind of like an additional fun thing to try and you also have to have five friends and five enemies which is kind of just an interesting little tidbit, I guess. And I'm telling you all of this just to give you an idea of the kind of person that's going to be living in this house, just so you can sort of picture why we're doing this and why we're going to be adding in the things that we are. If you want to read all of the Not So Very Challenge rules, I can link them down below for you. It's, it's a long challenge, but it's kind of a fun one. I wrote it so long ago that I think a lot of people don't even really associate it with me anymore. I think it's kind of like taken on a life of its own. And that makes me really happy because when I wrote the challenge, me and my friend Zoe that wrote it together. We did not anticipate that anybody would play this. We kind of just wrote it for ourselves. So it's pretty cool that it's become like a thing on its own. But back to the build for a second. You're probably wondering at this point, now Kayla, I understand your sim's a programmer, but why do they live in a cottage in the middle of nowhere? Like programming kind of gives city San Myshuno energy to me. I don't know if you feel the same way, but that's kind of why I wanted to do it. I gotta be honest, half of it is because my sim's name is Moss and I wanted to use that mossy roof texture from werewolves. Like that roof that we have chosen was half the inspiration for the entire build. But the other half was that the storyline of this generation was that we kind of started hacking illegally for money and we eventually got so good at it that we got offered a job in like this real programming company. So I kind of felt like living in the middle of nowhere hacking during this illegal era kind of made sense. Plus my sim married a spellcaster so she's got a ton of garden stuff happening. So I wanted to have space and like have a greenhouse and things like that to grow all of her plants. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of what the inspiration behind this build was. And now I want to walk you through what the actual inside is going to be like. You can see we've got kind of an interesting cottagey shape going on on the exterior. I did a couple brave things like include a diagonal wall and like some diagonal segments of this place, which maybe wasn't a good idea, but it does look really cool from the exterior. But with the diagonals, I struggled a lot on the inside with the floor plan. I knew that I didn't want it to be the biggest of houses. We're kind of downsizing with this one compared to our previous house, which I can also link down below. In total, it's a three bedroom house. It's got an office downstairs, but it also has a couple skill rooms in the basement. I have like a spellcaster layer in the basement and I also have like a hacking dungeon in the basement. Upstairs on the top floor, we have just two bedrooms and one bathroom. I was coming from kind of a big household, so I kind of wanted to tone it down a little bit and have less sims to worry about, but I did end up having twins. So, you know, things never go according to plan when you play The Sims. Upstairs, there's just the two bedrooms though. And at this point in the build when I'm making this, Moss has two younger brothers who are living here. So the upstairs bedrooms belong to their brothers and eventually they moved out and we replaced them with kids' bedrooms for our future children. The primary bedroom for Moss and their wife is downstairs. And then also downstairs, we've got kind of a nice open kitchen, living, dining area space. And then of course that office area and everything that we've got going on down there. Can I just walk you through 
what's happened in this series recently though while I'm trying to figure out the floor plan because the amount of chaos that has been going on in this household has reached a point where it's almost unbearable, okay? So in the previous generation, it was the peach generation. So kind of like a pinky orange color theme. My Sim's name was Princess, um, like, Princess Peach. And the whole storyline there as part of the challenge is that you join the detective career and then when you become an adult you realize that you hate it and eventually quit the job and become a joke star comedian. I gotta be honest, I kind of hated that part of the challenge because I did not like playing the detective career. I find it kind of repetitive and boring and just in general I don't really want to be a police officer. And there is something to be said of quitting the police to become a clown, but anyway. We played through the whole generation. Part of the rules also are to marry a co-worker, so we met this guy called Lincoln at work. They had a fantastic relationship. They had like four kids. One of those four kids obviously is Moss, who is our new legacy heir. But then at one point, Lincoln got abducted by an alien. Now this is really unfortunate because if you're familiar with the Sims 4 aliens, Sims can get pregnant when they get abducted. Specifically, male Sims can have alien pregnancies. So Lincoln comes back from this abduction and he starts to feel a bit sick. And then slowly but surely, he starts to grow an alien baby. I kind of regretted this, I'm not gonna lie. I probably should have like, you know, gotten rid of the pregnancy, but I let it happen. That kid was born, I named it Slime, kind of going with the green theme. The other kids were Pickle and Algae at this point as well. I, I like to have these kind of chaotic names and not so very, I think it's fun. When else are you gonna have a chance to do that, you know? So I, I kind of embrace it. I actually think that Algae is a good name, I stand by that. Slime and Pickle are not as, they're not as reasonable, but they're funny, so it's fine. Well, everything is well and good. Princess, she's raising slime as if it was her own child. And then Lincoln gets abducted again. He's gonna have another alien baby. And I'm live streaming this challenge, so it kind of leads me to um, act a little bit more chaotically, I guess you could say. So me and my Twitch chat, we start talking and we're like, you know what? This, it doesn't seem like it's an abduction anymore. It almost seems like it's on purpose. I think he's not being abducted at all. I think he's having an affair with the alien, who, by the way, is named Senior Pollination Technician Number 3. So we we made this alien. We brought her into the safe. I named her Polly Nation. First name Polly, last name Nation. And we kind of let Lincoln start having this alien affair. We, we sort of let him go there. He was talking to her. He's been seeing Polly behind our back. And get this, to make matters worse, Polly knew our brother because our brother was an astronaut. So when Polly comes down to Earth from space, she goes and stays at our brother's house. So this creepy alien has like infiltrated every aspect of my Sims life, right? She's dating her husband. She's living with our brother. She's mothered two of our children. Like, this lady is evil, okay? She knows what she's doing. Obviously, Lincoln's worse because he's the one cheating on us, but this alien is bad news. And get this, it gets worse because when Princess, my legacy heir, catches Lincoln cheating on her, she gets so upset, so angry, that she ends up dying from being enraged. If you didn't know about this, there's a couple emotional deaths in The Sims 4. You can die from being too embarrassed, too angry, or too playful. I don't know if I've ever, at least in the last like five years or something, had a sim accidentally die from being enraged. I've definitely done it on purpose before, but I don't know if I've had it just randomly happen to me in a long time. Well, uh-oh, Princess literally died from her anger. I did not interfere. <laughs> I didn't make it worse. She actually died on her own from being so upset about this. She had a teenager and two children in her house when she died, which was really bad because she was a single mom at this point. So I get left here with just Moss and their two younger brothers, and I had this giant house that I could not afford the bills of. And I didn't really want to play with Lincoln because I didn't want to deal with his alien kids. Like, I did not want any part in that. So I left Lincoln out living with Polly, and I had Moss raising their siblings on their own. Which actually kind of fit into the hacking storyline I told you about, because we were trying to pretend like, oh, they started illegally hacking and then got offered a real job. But with this story, where like their mom died when they were super young, Young and they had to like make money to provide for their siblings, it makes sense that they would get into illegal hacking. So it kind of fit the story, even if it was very unfortunate that it happened. I haven't had an heir die by accident randomly in a long time. And thankfully I had finished all of Princess's tasks. So she had like maxed her career and did her aspiration already. So I didn't like lose the challenge, but it was really bad timing because I needed her for money still. And that's also part of why I wanted to downsize in this house and make a slightly cheaper and slightly smaller house 
house just because then we could afford the bills a little bit easier. And that again is also why our two younger siblings have the upstairs bedrooms because we are still taking care of them at this point because they were still teenagers. I'll jump ahead in the timeline a little bit because this was like a couple weeks ago at this point. So now in real life, I've kind of like progressed further in my save. So at this point, Moss actually has three kids of their own. We had two twin babies that are now a part of the blue generation and their names are Denim and Jort. Jort, like Jean shorts. So <laughs> we're kind of doing this like blue jeans theme. And then the third baby that was just born is named Smurf. So that's kind of where we're at right now. And the blue generation is gen 10 of Not So Berry, so it's actually the end of the series. Once those kids grow up and like do their whole thing, I'll be finished with the Not So Berry challenge, which is kind of weird because I've been playing it for a long time on Twitch. We will simply have to think of something new to try over on my Twitch channel, which should be fun. I'm kind of looking forward to it. If you want to come by my Twitch channel, I stream The Sims pretty much every day. I'll link it down below. My name's just Lil Simsy on Twitch. We mostly build, but we do some gameplay. I'm playing this and also the 100 baby challenge right now. And in the 100 baby challenge, I have officially had 69 babies and I'm not kidding. <laughs> so we're feeling good about that. We're getting close to being done. Sort of. Kinda. Although this week, the new Stardew Valley update is going to be coming out, so I anticipate myself doing a fair bit of farming, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I have been counting down the days until this update. If you have never played Stardew Valley and you like The Sims, they're very different games, but I think the target audience is very similar and you will probably like it. It's also not that expensive and it's probably on sale right now. I should check, but there's a Steam Spring Sale happening. But we're talking like $15 full price for this game, which compared to The Sims is like really cheap because you know how The Sims is. And speaking of farming, we're kind of working on the exterior layout now of this house. I'm gonna warn you, I ended up moving this to a different lot. We had originally started building it on a 50 by 40 lot in Henford on Bagley. And I just felt like it was too big because our house is quite small and there was like so much empty space that I didn't really love how it was looking. So I ended up swapping it over to a 40 by 30 lot in the same world. So we're like doing this layout right now, but I'm gonna move it and then like reorganize the backyard. I'll like put the greenhouse in a different spot, but it's still gonna look the same. And I really love the greenhouse because I got to use the green swatch of those windows. It's like literally a greenhouse, which I thought was quite fun. And I need that too, because I've got a ton of plants. We have things like the death flower and all of these like spell caster plants now. So we had to use all of those in here. This is kind of a weird shaped lot though, because this one switches it from being sort of like vertically laid out to being horizontally laid out. So I had to make some adjustments. We've got a pretty big back patio over here. I also went in and added a pond. We've got kind of like a cute little swampy duck pond on the side. I have two ponds on this lot because I have one that's made with terrain tools and then one that is literally a shark pond, like the shark pond from Kip Famous. I just, I think I should probably warn you now, again, because I've been playing in this house, I, I do some slightly more chaotic things that I wouldn't normally include in a build. Um, including, you know, a shark pond for murder. I've got a really large collection of graves on this lot. You won't see it here in the speed build, but I'll show you in the tour. I have, and I'm not kidding, 283 graves that I keep here. It sort of started because I had just a lot of Sims. I'm I'm playing Gen 9 of the Not So Berry challenge, but I started Not So Berry after I already played a 10 generation regular legacy in this save. So this gen, the green Sim, is actually Gen 19 of the family. The family tree goes way back. And obviously at that point, we've had a lot of people, just a lot of siblings, a lot of partners, a lot of pets over the years. So we've collected quite a few graves just of our own, of Sims that have died of natural causes. And then I also started going through and collecting any graves that I saw just out and about, because obviously all of the original townies are super dead. Like the land grabs, the goths, they're all gone, long gone. And when you get to that point in a save, all of their graves are usually still there at their house. If you go to their lot, it'll be empty because they take all their stuff when they die, which is kind of annoying. And then their graves will just be there, like either in the back corner or by the front door straight inside of the house. So I went on what I like to call a grave hunt and I went through and collected every grave that I found outside. <laughs> it started by me just like taking graves of sims that died at the bar when I was there because sometimes elders just die, you know? And then it became me taking every grave I ever found and now I have almost 300. So I, I kind of fill in the entire front yard with graves. I keep joking that my ultimate goal is to have like a 64 by 64 lot and the house is tiny and the rest is all graves. This is not a very practical thing to do. Like realistically, 
realistically, my house is non-stop haunted because I kind of like having the ghosts around, but they keep breaking and then repairing my showers over and over again, which is kind of weird. I can never like super speed through the night because there's always ghosts there, but that's also okay because I kind of like seeing them. And I think it does make my game lag a bit, but that's also okay because the graves kind of outweigh the suffering, at least for me. I also really enjoy how whenever I'm streaming with this save on Twitch, I'll be playing and it looks like a normal house. You can see it looks totally fine. It's pretty, it's landscaped nicely, the interior's cute. So I love how I'm just playing normally and then I kind of like pan the camera outside for a sec because my sim like leaves to go to work and then half the chat that just got there is like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Did I just see a hundred graves in your front yard? It's like the shock factor of the people that haven't been there before <laughs> seeing it for the first time is really fun for me. And then I get to be like, oh yeah, those are just my graves. I have 283 of them. What? What's the problem? <laughs> I really like it. But anyway, speaking of landscaping, because I guess the graves are kind of like lawn ornaments. Um, we're going through and putting all of the plants in right now. And obviously most of the landscaping here is just green. That's part of why this house was a little bit easier than the average not so berry build because because green is not hard to come by when it comes to plants. I did add some like a whitish cream flower as an accent color because I didn't want to have only bushes. But overall, it's very overgrown. I've got like vines up all of the walls. We've got little plants everywhere. I used that little mossy stone flooring from the castle pack. Some of that stuff could not have come out at a better time because right as I was raising this child named Moss who was going to grow up and have their own mossy house, we got this whole moss pack in the castle stuff. Well, it wasn't like a whole moss pack. I got one floor and one wall, but it was good timing, okay, because I needed that. And now that we have finally finished the exterior, we are moving on to work on the inside a bit again. I just want to warn you and remind you that this is a green, not so berry house. So like every single thing in the house is green, which you might not like. Like it's not normal, certainly, and I wouldn't normally do this for a house if it wasn't like built for a challenge where the whole thing is supposed to be so chaotic. But I, I just want to bring it up again because sometimes when I do these builds on Twitch, a lot of the chat is like, oh, maybe you can pick an accent color. And no, <laughs> the accent color is green. I guess actually the accent color is like wood in this house. There's a lot of green and a lot of wood, but that's okay. It's mostly a joke. It's just fun to have everything be so, so much. I also got a chance to use a lot of items that I never really go for, in particular in just this kitchen alone. You're gonna see I used the horse ranch counters. I struggled a lot with like what kind of counter to use because there's a handful of different green ones and they all weren't really working for me. The horse ranch ones were kind of leaning more mint to me, but they were the best that I could find. I used the new for rent tile on the floor, which I also have not used yet. I don't even think I realized that it came in that kind of weird green color. There's some green horse ranch dining chairs. There's a lot of green rugs from things like Realm of Magic and werewolves and vampires that I was putting in. And like with any build, I think the kitchen was probably like the main deciding factor for me. Like once I had figured out what I wanted it to be like, that kind of set the tone for the rest of the build. And I know I just said I used the horse ranch counters. It looks like I ended up settling on the country kitchen kit counters. <laughs> I couldn't remember what I had picked. I went back and forth a lot. I really wasn't sure what I wanted. Now, budget-wise, we had like 150,000 simoleons for this house. I think I ended up making it worth more like 180,000 total. I'm never really 100% sure how much I want to spend because I oftentimes will under-budget, especially for these legacy houses. I know that, say, I have like 175k, so I'm like, all right, let's make the house worth 150 and just see what we can do with that. And then if we need to like use the extra 25k, then we will. I also do a lot of things like bringing my old appliances with me, bringing my old TV with me, because you can save some money by not having to rebuy it, because furniture in The Sims depreciates in value over time. So if you buy this like 4,000 simoleon stove, for example, and you've had it for a while, you might sell it for like 3,200. And that's obviously not good for moving houses because you're selling your same stove and then buying a new one that's more expensive for the same thing. So often when I move in my legacy houses, I'll like delete the stove in the new house and just bring my old one with me. So I'll kind of buy like a weirdly partially empty house where the toilets are all missing and the stoves are gone and the TV's not there and the computers aren't there and then I'll bring my computers from home. Also, I did get a haircut last week. I got a haircut on Thursday, so my hair's a little bit shorter. I know it might not look that different to you. <laughs> I usually keep my hair around this length. I, I don't really like to let it grow out too much more than this, so it's not that much shorter, but if I look different, that's why. That's twice now that I've gone to someone else 
to cut my hair because most recently for the past couple of years, ever since COVID, I've been cutting my hair myself, which is fine and it mostly looked okay. It didn't look good. It was kind of choppy and uneven and actually kind of bad, but I usually made it look okay from the front. Like for the most part, you couldn't really tell that it was uneven most of the time. It was just the back that was an issue, but you don't see the back of my head because I don't like turn around in my videos. So it was fine. I didn't mind. But then I was like, you know what, Kayla, it would look better and you would feel better if you actually went to a professional for this. <laughs> and so I was brave and I went to get my hair cut for real. I feel so embarrassed when I talk about these things because I, look, I kind of um, am scared. <laughs> I don't leave the house like ever. I don't go places really much. So going out to get a haircut was kind of a big deal for me, which I know is like so cringe. I know, I know, <laughs> but um, it was, I'm doing better with stuff like that. Okay. I went by myself. I drove all the way there. I, it was fine. I did it. Look, a lot of us internet people are internet people for a reason. <laughs> I, um, I've got some anxiety stuff that I'm working through, but we're, we're getting there. Small wins, small progress, right? Oh my God. And the other huge life update. I'm sorry. I keep talking about this. This has just been like a massive ordeal in my life <laughs> and like the most expensive thing I've ever bought aside from just the house in general, but we had to replace our air conditioning unit this week. Um, they came on Wednesday and replaced it. So I have new AC now, which is huge. I'm bringing it up because I talked about it in my last speed build, I think, but it is officially done. It took them all day. They got here at like 9.30 in the morning and they left at like 6 p.m. They were literally here all day. The interior part of it is in here. So they like fixed some duct work in here. They like put the new machinery in here in the closet. And then outside they put a new concrete slab down underneath the outside unit. They moved the old unit away. They put the new one in. They put new thermostat in. Like they did a lot, which I guess it makes sense that it took a long time, but me and the cats were hiding in my bedroom like all day. I streamed from Dan's office because obviously I couldn't really be in here that day because they were in here. Could you imagine me just sitting here like playing the Sims talking to myself and they're like in the closet? <laughs> No way, no way. So I pre-recorded a bit and then streamed from Dan's room so that we could still stream that day. So that was kind of fun. It was like a field trip, kind of. I was joking to chat about that. I was like, haha, we're on a field trip together. <laughs> we're on Dan's computer. And then after I got off stream, I stayed downstairs with the cats to help keep them company so they wouldn't be scared. My poor kittens get really scared of strangers. They were like hiding underneath the blankets in the bed, which makes sense because it was kind of loud. They were like hammering and stuff for a time. Not all day, but like for parts of it. So if you were a little tiny cat and there was like a strange man in your house and he was being loud and hammering things, I'd be really scared too. <laughs> but I was kind of like hiding with them, keeping them company. And then it was done and now my AC is fresh and new and it should be better. It's like, you know, more efficient and stuff now. So it should help with the electricity bill. It's just, you know, the bill itself <laughs> of the actual unit. <laughs> that is kind of a um, distressing number. It's okay. We knew we were going to have to do it. We knew when we bought the house that everybody was like, oh boy, that's like 20 years old. Good luck with that. Like it's going to need replaced soon. It's been fixed many times. I can tell like the, the, we had it like serviced and stuff and they were like, Ooh, <laughs> so we knew it was coming. Um, and it's probably good that it happened now and not like in the peak of summertime because I live in Florida, but wow. And yikes, <laughs> you know, but anyway, we're working more on finishing, furnishing the house. Now I've talked a lot about nothing and we're actually working on the rooms at this point. So we're doing the primary bedroom downstairs and this bed I get asked about all the time when I use it. This bed I know is glorious glorious, right? It's the realm of magic bed. It's got this beautiful glass canopy. I've actually used it quite a bit recently because it has this pretty rose swatch that I used here because it's green, but it also has kind of like a celestial moon and stars swatch that I've used a bit in some of my crystal builds recently. So this has been kind of a hit, this bed. I'm having like a second wave where I'm becoming kind of obsessed with realm of magic. I have made so many ranty negative videos about realm of magic, and now I've been playing with it a lot more recently because like this sim is a spellcaster and stuff and I'm learning that maybe I kind of like it <laughs> which if you could go back and tell me when the pack came out in like 2019 or whatever oh my god yeah I've I've kind of um changed my mind I still think the world is bad and the the lots are bad but the gameplay is actually kind of iconic and it's really helpful as well because spellcasters are less intrusive than your average occult sim like they're not gonna have to drink blood and die in the sun they're not gonna random 
randomly rampage like werewolves. They don't really have a downside, and the magic powers they get are so useful. You can make potions that fix all of your needs just by like cooking some apples, basically. It's very easy. They can get spells to repair any broken items, to just spawn food randomly. You can clean stuff with spells. They can teleport with spells. Like, spellcasters are basically cheating with how good they are. So I've been having a lot of fun doing that and like, you know, stocking the fridge with magic food and, <laughs> and all of that. It's really been changing my perspective on the whole spellcaster thing. So maybe I should re-review that pack now and, and kind of like revisit it <laughs> because I think I've changed my mind. So downstairs in this living room, I've got a lot of built-in bookshelves with like space for storage. I do this a lot more in my legacy challenge builds and like the houses that I actually play in than the ones that I build for fun. Cause I do a lot of building just to build and I don't really include space for like knickknacks in those builds but when I'm actually playing the sims I love to collect things I like collect snow globes I collect all kinds of the crystals now because of the new pack I like to get those little simi capsules from snowy escape so I like to have a place to put all that stuff even like the the little decor that you can craft from the woodworking table I just have a large collection of all of those things and trophies from my years of the sims so I like to put shelves in places that I can just display those items. So on the gallery, weirdly, this house has quite a few empty shelves, but that's because I'm using them to display my stuff. If you look closely in the hallway next to this room, you might see a cabinet and some empty shelves on the wall right there. That is like a collectible display case, basically. I'm using that in my save right now to put all of my stuff up. One of the most, um, I guess controversial things that I have on that display case is my horse poop. But we had a horse in the previous generation of this save, the, the Sim Princess that died of anger, she had a horse. And so um, I kind of, the horse is now dead, obviously it's been a while. And, and so I wanted to keep something to remember the horse by. And I just had a piece of their poop in the inventory, my household inventory somewhere. And I decided to put it up and like leave it on the shelf. And it does, it just sits there stinking, but it's kind of nice. So I like to have those sorts of memorabilia pieces you know, around the house. <laughs> so that's what these shelves in this living room are for. In here, I also wanted to have some pet stuff like cat trees, pet beds, because these Sims had three pets. They had two cats and a dog, which was really excessive to me, but I managed to make it work. I also put a chess table in here because you need the logic skill for like so many careers. I always feel kind of silly doing this because chess tables are so dramatic. It seems very fancy to have in a house like this, but actually in The Sims, it's quite useful. I do get made fun of a lot in the comments for always putting chess tables like everywhere. <laughs> I am very known to put chess tables on patios and porches and stuff too in this game, but they're useful. I do actually use them for my Sims to build skills and it's nice to content for porches, especially if you're playing without packs and you don't have like rocking chairs and stuff. Chess table is good. It works well. As far as other stuff in this room goes, I use the horse ranch couches. I don't really know if I like them that much. They're like green leather. I haven't used that swatch in any other builds yet, but again, this is the green house. So it felt like the bright green leather was perfect for this space. But do you kind of see what I mean when I say that it's a little bit less jarring with everything being green than some of the previous not so berry builds have been? I don't know if you've seen the other ones that I've done here on YouTube, but like when I made the all red house for Not So Berry, red when everything is red is, it's a bit much. Like it's kind of chaotic. It's very bold and scary. I think green is almost a neutral. At least I kind of see green as being almost a neutral, especially a lot of these particular shades of green. So it's not as shockingly like bright and horrifying when you look at all of it in here. I thought the same thing about the pink house actually. Everything being pink wasn't even that bad. It sounds like it was would be bad, but I do regular builds that are all pink everywhere. So having the pink not so berry build just kind of felt like any old day. <laughs> I think the blue one, the next house, it's gonna be like the ultimate blue suburban, but it's also not gonna be that bad because I do a lot of all blue everywhere. Maybe it's just the colors that I don't like that I find jarring. <laughs> the orange house was really difficult for me. I did love the yellow one. The yellow one was one of my favorites as well. It's kind of fun getting to explore and like try and do themed builds like this. It might even be a good tip for you if you're trying to like find some build inspiration. You don't have to play the Not So Berry Challenge, but if you wanted to do like color themed builds just for fun, because it's a really interesting activity to like branch out of your comfort zone with all of the stuff in The Sims. Because doing this, I was really digging through all of the items in game and trying to find stuff that works that I maybe don't normally use. So there's so many rugs and floorings and, and all these random wallpapers that I kind of forgot were there that we had a chance to use for the first time in this house. And then it's just kind of fun and silly 
to play in because everything is so bright green. Now, the next room that we're working on is uh, a little bit more on the chaotic side. We've moved down to the basement at this point, obviously. And like I had mentioned earlier, we have two kind of like secret layer spaces in the basement. The first one we're doing right now is Moss's little green programming room. <laughs> and so I used a lot of neon lights down here. We've got all of the gaming stuff, like that fancy gamer mat. We have a computer. We've got like some weird wacky wallpapers. I felt like this was the best space in the whole house to be kind of chaotic because I had done mostly like cottage core stuff. And then in here, I was like, this is the gamer space. We can use the neon desk and all of this tech stuff that I haven't put anywhere else. I did also put like a couch in there. There's some brick accent walls, lots of very, very green lighting. <laughs> I even found this like martini light, which I totally forgot was there, but considering Moss has to master the mixology skill, it kind of worked perfectly. There's like a set of game posters from high school years that has like a Minecraft thing on it. So that was kind of a cute thing to add. High school years even has this kind of weird green couch. It's black with like green seams, I guess. And I've never used that. So I put that in here. There's like a little leafy dangly thing on the ceiling. <laughs> we got all kinds of stuff going on. And it's a really stark contrast from the like dungeon vibes of the room next door because their wife has the spellcaster room and that's just full of like mossy walls and flooring and cauldrons and stuff. I did put secret bookcase doors into each of these rooms because again, when else can you use that stuff? So the basement, I was pretending that it had like a little utility room where there's a litter box and like a couple of decor box type items. I thought about adding in laundry and then changed my mind because that was dangerous. But I was trying in my head to pretend like, oh, the basement's just for storage. Like you just tell guests like, oh yeah, we have the laundry in the basement and then like a storage room. Don't worry about it. But in reality, it has two hidden doors that lead you to secret scary dungeon rooms. But now we are almost done with the builds. We're moving back up to the top floor and furnishing those last two bedrooms. The bedrooms in the speed builds are decorated for Moss's younger siblings. So they're kind of decorated for the previous gen, those green sims. But at this point in my gameplay, both of these sims have grown up and moved out. And I've replaced these rooms with bedrooms for Moss's kids. So when I show you the tour, these rooms will be like blue nurseries. <laughs> but that's just how the game works. You know, you things grow and change, your house moves on. But for the sake of the speed build and on the gallery, everything in the house is green. Most often when I'm actually playing this challenge, it ends up being a little bit more colorful than that because typically I play very generationally. So, you know, if Princess had not died, we would have had like an all green house for Moss, but a peachy colored room for Grandma and then blue rooms for the kids. So there usually ends up being a couple funky color additions in there, but um, no, Ma grandma's dead. So <laughs> she doesn't have a space in this house anymore. I kind of had fun in these rooms too, because it gave me an excuse to use some slightly more chaotic green things. Like there's that camo print rug. I don't think I've ever used that anywhere in a single other house ever before, <laughs> but it worked so perfectly in this green bedroom. So I put that in there. There's like green lava lamps, all of that kind of funky stuff was just like the perfect addition for this build. So the two Sims that lived up here were algae and pickle. Algae had the camo room and Pickle gets this room with this like all black bed and they had more of like a music vibe to them So I tried to put some music instruments in there I gotta be honest I didn't really play with them that much because by the time that they aged up I really wanted them to be gone because <laughs> I was trying to have Moss have their own kids So I was like waiting for Pickle to grow up and leave so I'd have space in the house for Moss to have kids because I had three pets So keep in mind I had Moss, Moss's wife, the three cats, <laughs> and then we had our two siblings So we had so many sims living here. I don't like having like seven or eight sims in a household. It's way too much for me. So I was like counting down the days until Pickle grew up out of being a teen. But I didn't want to like kick them out early or age them up early because I felt bad. After what these kids had been through and like Moss having to step up and raise their younger siblings themselves, I, I don't know. I just, it seemed like I needed to commit to raising Pickle. <laughs> even though I didn't want to. And then when I had those twin infants, I kind of regretted letting Pickle move out because I was like, mm, maybe I could have had some help. <laughs> maybe I would have liked to have had another Sim in this household, but I did what I did and I have to pay for my mistakes. And now that we're kind of wrapping
wrapping up the last little details on this build, I'm gonna pop back into the game and give you a tour of the finished product. So I've kind of hinted a little bit that things have changed ever so slightly since we first built this. So I'll show you around the updated version, but just keep in mind that this is the version that's on the gallery. I can't really upload the version that I have now to the gallery because the game thinks it has CC in it because it's got like my family photos and all this chaotic stuff. Please remember, I'm just warning you again that we are about to see a lot of graves. Just, just know what we're getting ourselves into as I open the game. So I built this one back here, kind of in the back of Henford on Bagley. Um, okay, let me just quickly make it summertime <laughs> and then I will show you around. So welcome to my Gen 9, not so berry, Shrek, cabiny, mossy cottage thing. Um, <laughs> Here on the exterior, just ignore all of this, okay? On the exterior, we've got a beautiful shape shell of a building with some lovely overgrown landscaping. To the right, we have that little duck pond. There is an alligator and some bugs and stuff. These boxes that you see, they disappear in live mode. So you just see like the stuff spawning out of it, but you don't actually see the weird box. Oh my God, stop being gloomy moss. <laughs> You've had a hard life, but stop. <laughs> Uh, kind of around the back, we've got a small little grass section. I've actually run out of space for my plants, so I might need to rethink some of this, but I'm trying to grow some things just here. We do have a swing set. Uh, coming way back this way, we've got our greenhouse that we talked about. Here, it's full of like all of my little alien plants and magical plants and things. Um, Normally, I would not have this stuff out here. I just have kids I'm worrying about. <laughs> but we've got a small table and a trash can. We've got this really cute setup around the pool. The pool's kind of gross, but I think it's fun for what this place is like it's kind of mossy which fits the vibes and then back out this way I kind of made a cute outdoor kitchen so we have an extra bar for moss to work on that mixology skill ignore that too um we have a pizza oven and a grill this is where I kill sims in this shark pond I tried really hard to hide it so it looked a bit more built in and also so you couldn't see the purple because I hate those purple flowers so I tried to cover them up it still works fine trust me I know and then I've got stuff to charge my crystals we've got an extra telescope also to kill sims uh, when you come in Inside the house. This is the little entryway we've got right here. I have a lot of my collectibles, like my fish on the wall. We've covered the things with photos. Um, showing you this is embarrassing because that is a dead sim, but again, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> to the right, this is like the office space. So I have a lot of skill items in here. We've got like our collectible posters that we've made from puzzles. We've got more photos and like gold bars around this computer. Oh, look, that, that's Princess and that's Lincoln, the guy who cheated on her with the alien and then she died. That was like early on in their relationship, but we could have known just based off of that photo, we should have known. That's our puzzle table. We've got like some boxes of puzzles and a cow plant there. There is a little tiny hall bathroom downstairs right in the entryway. And then when you come to the left, we've got this hall hallway and this on the gallery is empty but it's full of my collectibles here in our save just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about we have like wedding cake toppers that's the strangerville trophy from when I saved strangerville that's my horse's poop <laughs> uh, we've got simi capsules these are people's essences like from the cow plants that's Bethany's essence of inspiration she's from gen 10 we're on gen 19 isn't that kind of fun that I've kept it for so long um, over here to the left we have a super cute little living room you can see some more of my collectibles here in the shelves I've We've got some plaques from when I finished collections. We've got places for knitting and stuff. Over to the right, we have our dining room and our kitchen combo. So this is kind of what it's looking like. I've got a lot more photos and paintings on the walls around here. That's the alien baby, that's slime. And that's princess again, but that was her high school ex. She should have stayed with him. Things would have ended up better for her if she never got with Lincoln. <laughs> um, around here, down this little hallway, this is where you get into Moss's primary bedroom. So we've got some cute stuff going on here. They have an ensuite bathroom downstairs too. You can also see we've got a small little hall closet with some cleaning supplies and then in the basement we have that tiny little like utility room I was talking about. I used to have the litter box down there but then it kind of like the sims started being annoying about it so I put it upstairs on the patio just for now but I'd like for it to be down there. This is Moss's gamer room that I was showing you. We have a large collection of postcards here too. This is that magical room. I have recently extended it to include some crystal making stuff because of the crystal pack. I love this like mossy rug on the floor and everything. I I think this is really cool. And then when you go all the way upstairs, we've got a hallway with some more photos. I do have a rat, its name is Shrek. You can see some more of our Sims here on the wall. <laughs> and then we've got one bathroom upstairs and these are the new rooms that I've kind of updated for the blue gen because we've got a toddler right now and then the twins are currently children. So they have this kind of cute little blue room as well. They have to share because our house isn't big enough. <laughs> but this is what the place is looking like. I really 
love this house. I've been having a ton of fun playing in it. This video kind of reminds me of like the current household videos I used to make back like six years ago, where I would like update you all on my current gameplay that I was doing off camera. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one. And on that note, I am going to end this video right here. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you also sometimes collect graves and uh, I'll catch you all tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Bye everybody. I'm actually gonna be live on Twitch playing the Not So Berry Challenge tonight if you wanna come by and hang out with us. My name is just Lil Simsy on Twitch and I can update you all on the household. <laughs>